Hello everyone and welcome to Broke Talks. Today we'll have a look at the latest warning letter that was issued for Zydus Life Sciences Gujarat facility. So this warning letter has been issued to site on 29th August and it has been published onto the US FDA website on 10th September. This warning letter is for the inspection that was conducted in April 2024. As we have seen in the previous presentation, the inspection was conducted in April 2024 and total 10 483 observations were issued. For details of these 483 observations, a separate presentation is available, the link for which is available in the description box. However, if we look into the current warning letter that was issued in August 2024, there are only three discrepancies noted. So let us have a comparative look on what discrepancies came into the warning letter. So the first one, the discrepancy that is noted into the warning letter is the firm failed to thoroughly investigate any unexplained discrepancy or failure of the batch to meet its specification. The second observation that came into the warning letter consists of third and fourth uh, point into the 483, that is the firm failed to establish and follow appropriate return procedures to prevent microbial contamination of drug products that are purported to be sterile and that include validation of all the aseptic and sterilization processes. And the third point, it includes the fifth 483 that the firm failed to establish adequate return procedures for production and process control designed to assure that products have identity, strength, purity that they purport to possess and to follow all the return production and process control procedures. So that means that all the other points that are mentioned into the 483s have been accepted, the response for it have been accepted. So it has been a very good job done by the Zydus uh, compliance team because these observations were tough and there are only now three observations that have been listed into the warning letter that needs remediation. Before moving ahead, please ensure that you have subscribed to the channel Prof Talks and have pressed the bell icon so that you can receive the notification of upcoming presentations. We'll now have a look in detail onto the warning letter uh, that is issued to the firm. So the first observation is for the inadequate uh, investigation that was considered. First point in it is cross-contamination. So the warning letter states that for approximately three months, the firm has experienced multiple cross-contaminations. And the cross-contamination was mainly due to the manufacture of the product onto the shared equipment and inadequate cleaning. However, the investigation that was carried out failed to consider all the impacted patches or all the manufacturing equipments or the adequacy of the testing method that is used to release the patches. The initial cleaning study failed to assess whether the cleaning methods are adequate because the products that were identified which were later identified to be stickier. The subsequent cleaning studies also did not assess all the product contact surfaces. The firm attempted to implement an improved cleaning method as a CARPA. However, on further manufacturing, still cross-contamination was identified. The firm released some of the batches with not detected results even the, in the sequence the other batches were OT for this cross-contamination and there was no rationale provided how the samples tested were representative for the overall batch contamination. So in the response, it was stated that dedicated equipment will be used and a commitment was made to monitor the batches that were manufactured on the shared equipment. However, USFDA has determined this response and is inadequate because this contamination is generally non-uniformly distributed and testing alone is insufficient to determine the scope of cross-contamination. They have linked it to a cross-contamination voluntary recall that the firm has initiated in July 2024. The second point into the first observation is the glass particulate contamination. So the warning letter states that the firm has failed to adequately investigate and determine the root cause for the glass particulate contamination into an injectable product. The firm conducted successive visual inspections of the batch until the glass particulates were within the specification limit and then released the batches. Also, the operators performing the manual visual inspections were not adequately qualified because the qualification kits use the particulates of much higher value than as compared to 150 micrometers that was actually detected. So in the response, it was stated that the manufacturing of this particular product had been discontinued in August 22 and as you have not received any complaint for the glass particle in the product till date. It was also stated that the visual inspection kits have now been appropriately sized particles. 
the FDA have found this response to be inadequate because lack of customer complaints is neither a verification of a robust quality system nor indication that appropriate process controls are in place. It is again linked to a voluntary recall that was issued in 2024 for the glass particulate contamination of this particular product. The warning letter states that the response to the warning letter should provide a comprehensive independent assessment of the overall investigation systems for all the discrepancies like deviations, complaints, OS, etc. And a detailed action plan to remediate the system. The action plan which should include significant improvements in the investigation competencies, scope determination, root cause evaluation, CARPA effectiveness, quality unit oversight and appropriately return procedures. It should also address how the firm will ensure all phases of investigations are appropriately conducted. The second observation that the firm failed to establish and follow appropriate return procedures for the, to prevent microbial contamination. The first point is related to poor aseptic behaviors. So the investigators observed multiple instances of poor aseptic techniques like the operators disrupted the first air in the ISO 5 areas by reaching over the sterile vials stoppers and the stoppers during the intervention without removing the affected wires or stoppers. The operators touch the stoppers in the restricted access barrier while aligning the stoppers during setup. Also there was observation related to inadequate airflow where the air airflow was not inadequate and the interventions within the RAP4 area did not adequately demonstrate unidirectional airflow. The airflow was observed flowing outwards and upwards. The design of the stopper conveyor track exiting the stopper appears to block the first air. In the response, it was stated that lack of visible smoke was due to the location and limited number of smoke sticks during the condition. It was also stated that they have conducted new smoke studies. The operators followed the procedure that interventions are evaluated uh, during the airflow studies and you have observed no discrepancies. Also, it was indicated that there was no media fail or sterility failures for the past two years. USFDA determined this response as inadequate because it does not adequately address the poor aseptic technique and also did not address how the firm will ensure adequate review and approval of the qualification and validation studies. Also, they did not commit to perform a comprehensive review of the similar qualification and validation studies. In the next paragraph, they have explained the importance of the sterility assurance behavior and the interventions that can lead to contamination and how to control them. And they have given the reference of the US FDA guidance for industry that is trial drug products produced by aseptic processing to refer and to understand the importance of aseptic practices. The warning letter states that in response to this letter, the firm should provide a comprehensive risk assessment of the sterility practices, including all human interaction within the ISO 5 area, equipment placements and the ergonomics, air quality into the ISO 5 area and the surrounding areas, the facility layout and the personal flows and material flows. Also, they should provide a detailed remediation plan based on the findings of the above risk assessment. The plan should also ensure appropriate aseptic practices and clean room behaviors during production and should include appropriate supervisory steps during the production steps and the frequency of the quality oversight during aseptic processing. A thorough retrospective review and assessment of the impact of the followed poor aseptic techniques on to the sterility of the drug products that are already manufactured and evaluation of the design of the stopper conveyor track to assess the adequacy of the unidirectional airflow. Third observation that is the firm failed to establish adequate return procedures for production and process control. So it is in this it is stated that the performance qualification report that is the PPQ lack adequate supporting data to assess the interbatch and the intrabatch variability. So there's one example given where the interbatch and intrabatch variability has not been determined during the PPQ. The firm has also failed to collect data during PPQ studies to assess whether stopping the vials have adequately prevented unintended ingress of air and maintained the specified sterility. So in the, in the response, it was stated that adequate sampling was conducted and the products are in state of control. And also that during the PPQ, intra and intra-batch variability was observed within the specified standard deviation for the CQAs and CPPs. They also committed to revise the procedures to include acceptance criteria for the intra-batch and intra-batch variability. And based on the retrospective review and additional PPQ studies. Also, it stated that they have now conducted 100% leak test for the sterile injectable product. But the FDA have determined this response as inadequate 
because the evaluation of variability does not appear to result from enhanced samplings, but from analytical testing results already provided in the PPQ summary report, which consisted of composite samples and the results. Further, the FDA have stated few comments on the importance of the process validation and how it is important to evaluate the soundness and design and state of control. And they have given the reference of the US FDA guidance for industry for process validation, general principles and practices to refer. In response to this letter, the US FDA accept an assessment of each drug product process to ensure that there is data driven and scientifically signed program to identify variability. So this should include evaluating suitability of the equipment, sufficiency of the detectability in the monitoring and testing system, quality of input materials and reliability of each manufacturing process. And they should also provide the timeline for completing the further PPQ studies of the marketed drug products. And finally, the further two points that are common uh, to most of the warning letters, that is uh, recommendation for GMP consultant. So they should consult qualified GMP consultant uh, for assessing them and GMP requirements and helping them. However, this will not relieve the firm's obligation to comply with GMP and the management will be responsible for resolving and addressing all the deficiencies. And in the conclusion it states that the violations listed are not inclusive and the firm should carry out an overall uh, exhaustive uh, review to determine all the other violations. So if the firm is considering any action like uh, stoppage of the supply, which will which can cause a drug shortage into the US, they should contact the drug shortage department immediately so that US FDA can work with the firm or can see other options that are available to avoid any drug shortages. And they should correct the uh, violations very promptly because FDA may withhold approval of the new applications till the violations are completely addressed and FDA may re-inspect to verify the firm has completed all the corrective actions. So failure to address any of these violations will lead US FDA to impose an import alert. After this letter is received, the firm is expected to respond within 15 working days with a comprehensive uh, response of what actions they have already taken and to complete the corrective and preventive action and provide a justification if they are unable to provide uh, the complete the corrective and preventive action within this time frame and the further address have been given where the response has to be sent. We come to the end of this presentation. Hope you have liked the presentation. Kindly subscribe to the channel Prof Talks for more such informative videos.